will have the tag you put on your box, boy or girl. And you need to use that, and you also need to include $7 for each box you send. So we'll get it done, and as soon as we're done with that, then we'll have the youth build tree up. And please read the instructions. <laughs> Anna says, please read the instructions. They are important. Yes. So, we'll be looking forward to that. And I, Sandy, do you know, are there any other churches in town that participate in this? I know that Kate Kinnaman's involved in some. Okay. If, you're, if you do happen to be able to hear this on the TV, and your church doesn't participate or would you would like to, they can bring them by here, right, Sandy? Yes. Uh -huh. And if they have any questions, just call Okay, that's down. I know Secret Santa is coming up. We used to have the community fairly involved. The school said, no, we don't want you involved. And I think now the school wants us involved again. So that's pretty worthy and pretty important for a lot of kids in our area because Cindy or somebody who works at school may know well over half of our students are what, free and reduced lunches. And we have a lot of children who have a lot of needs. And uh, just as a, an opinion thing, don't tell me that their parents are driving around with new cars or this or that. That really doesn't matter if they're not taking care of their children. And we just found out that uh, November 22nd will be the uh, uh, wake up St. John Hudson Ministerial Alliance Community Thanksgiving Service. The reception will be at 6:30. So 6.30 with cookies and coffee, worships at 7, so that's a Sunday night, right? Yeah, plenty. Yeah, Sunday evening. And uh, I'm assuming you're giving the message, maybe? Right? Okay. Usually the, the rookie or the newest person gets, gets to do it. Dick, also on the bottom of that flyer, it's very important that either you come and give a tie that night or make a donation to Ministerial Alliance. They're the ones that help people with their gas bills, money, whatever. We have the food here, but, and that's through the community. But Ministerial Alliance coffers are almost empty because they were hit hard this summer, and I think it will continue. Okay, and I think that's going to continue because the state of the state to be crude sucks. And we're looking at a $400 million shortfall in the state budget, so I don't think there's going to be more money to help people in need. What Sandy said, if you couldn't hear it, even if you can't come that evening, they're going to take an offering. We need this because we're coming up on the food boxes, and with the food boxes, Sandy, don't they normally hand out uh, some gift cards at Dylan's for sundries and such? So there's a heck of a lot going on. And unfortunately, we help year-round, but we tend to focus our efforts at Christmas time so let's let's really pay attention to how we can help. And on, on the really bad side, it's just not St. John. On that note, can I add to that? Can I stop you? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, we had a gentleman come in. Okay, we're having trouble with people hearing the broadcast, so I hate to do this, but there you go. That's fine. I was told not to touch it, so. Um, so. This gentleman came in this week and he was needing some funding for his uh, uh, electric bill. Had a child at home with uh, a nebulizer and they couldn't, they had no electricity. I could do nothing for that because we didn't have the funding in the Ministerial Association. So, those, I, it's just a additionally emphasize the importance of those offerings at these special times of year because that helps fund us through the, through the rest of the year as well. So please keep that in mind. Thank you. And not only that, you don't have to wait till the 22nd to give them the money. I'm assuming they could drop it by when you're around or Sandy or they could go down maybe to the Shepherd Center and can drop it off. And the other thing you can do is if you uh, purchase items at the thrift store, I think that money helps support what they're trying to do. Okay. I'll make sure I haven't forgotten anything. 
Uh, Joanne would like you all to know that being an usher is not painful, and that she is trying to get ushers and readers for the upcoming year, so if you would please see her. And, uh, got that, got that, okay. This, this is a busy week if you're in, uh, uh, service on committees. Kim, did you have anything to say about the SPRC? Yeah, thank you. Uh, no, no, no. I do. No, Kim. <laughs> oh, I'm right here. I will see you up. Uh, it doesn't right. help with this. <laughs> I am a devil. You're consistent. I am. Can I raise it? Yeah, you can do it. Okay. Uh, on Wednesday, our meeting is going to be a little long. Uh, because we have a lot of paperwork we need to do, and we also have some its various parts of the church responsibilities that we need to work on. So please, if some of the members are not here today, get a hold of them because we need everybody there to go. Some of the year end paperwork we've got to do, and some of the process moving forward that we've got to do. Uh, it's been added to a little bit, so I apologize for the length that it might be. I'm going to say an hour and a half tops. If we can get through it, not have too much disagreement on things. Your nose is growing. Yeah. Uh, did you have to get that message from yes. Dennis? Have you said anything about that yet? Do you, do you want me to, or do you? I, uh, I can't. Okay. Uh, on the 16th, we also, that is the charge conference. St. John Church is going to have their own charge conference after the three point charge. So we need everybody here for that also. The only topic that's going to be addressed is the parsonage. Uh, some explanation of the process on that. Hopefully, on the 4th, we can get a lot of that stuff taken care of. That's part of the deal that we're going to deal with on the uh, RSPRC meeting, is the parsonage liquidation process to meet the requirements of the United Methodist Church hierarchy, if you want to say it that way. So, on uh, Wednesday, please be here. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover. And then remember, on the 16th, after the regular three-point charge conference, St. John will have their own charge conference. Dennis will be presiding on that one also. Is that the church conference? So it's, yeah, it's everybody a church. has a vote. Yeah, everybody will have a vote on that one. So that's why we need to have everybody here on that secondary charge conference on the 16th. Thanks. That's it. And uh, just in case you don't know, we sell the parsonage. It's not like we're going to go down to the casino in Dodge City and have fun. Those funds have to be very specifically regulated and taken care of, and permissible use is for Methodists, so it's well spelled out. So that does not alleviate any, if anybody's listening, doesn't alleviate any financial obligations on our part. It just eliminates an albatross around our neck. Now, on the 5th, you're going to be a hudge. And we have a joint finance and administrative council meeting that was originally scheduled for the 11th. We'll be on the 5th. Joe, is there anything that needs to be said about that? No, it's important to be there because we'll be, uh, the nominations committee will be presenting the slate of candidates for the committees and chairmanship and things for 2016. Okay. The, the purpose for this, one, we've got to kind of like officially make sure the budget's okay. We, the, the, except for the lay leadership committee, the uh, board, of uh, the, the church board approves the nominees. There are still gaping holes, and Joe and I have talked about this. We're not filling them. We're not putting in names to put in names. So if things don't get done, things just don't get done. Because it's much worse to put people in a position that they don't want. Now, next Sunday at 7.30, finally. A.M. Yeah, 7.30 a.m. We will be having a breakfast. So I need to see Kim and Joe and Anna real briefly after the service so we work out the details. But Kim, we have griddles for pancakes. Yeah, two griddles. What did that tell you? <laughs> I'm going to cook a lot. <laughs> On the 11th, and please be here at 7.30, we will... Uh, it's just going to be some, it'll be pancakes and some egg stuff and uh, pure sugar and <laughs> not pure sugar. And we'll get you through it. Invite people. We'll have food for 35, 40 people. Uh, next uh, week from this coming Wednesday is Antrim's Supper and Auction. So 
If you can get down there and support them, that would be great. Nate's going to be a busy boy on the 14th here at Kenwood. Uh, that's done now. Okay, the 16th has already been mentioned. On the 18th, uh, at 11.30 a.m., the St. John EMW is having a World Thank offering, and Connie's in charge of that, Connie Ball. The rest of it you already know about. The youth Bill is coming up, and we normally are really good at that. Those kids really appreciate what you all do for them. Uh, birthdays. Is Deb here? Don't see Deb Waddle. Don't see Ronnie. And you don't see them. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries we missed? Okay. Are there any announcements? Yes, ma'am. Just announce the one for the people involved in church offices and things. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's what I have that note for. Uh, we're, we're back in the business of getting things. Communication. Communication. And so back in the church office by the copier, Kim and I know where it's at, a couple others, there's the there's little things to put, what do they call those, Kim, the little plastic? Like an inbox. And so if you see your name back there, try to check it every week when you come in, because there might be something there of value, uh, communications-wise. Now, before we start, I've been working late a lot, getting stuff done, and I've been listening to talking heads. And I'm amazed at how many people, Democrat and Republican and Independent, know exactly what God wants. I am impressed. Proverbs speaks to that. Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. But do not add to His words or else he will rebuke you, and you will be found a liar. If you would all now please turn to your bulletin and stand as you are comfortable and able, and we will read the call of worship. May those who love your salvation continually say, Great is the Lord. May our heart is in God, because we trust let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. If you would all now please turn to hymn number 359. Alas, did, and, alas and did my Savior bleed.
apologize for being uh, a little late this morning on the way. Uh, our oil pressure dropped in the car, so I'm not sure what happened, but uh, um, I had to add some oil and it seems to be okay. It doesn't seem to be dripping anywhere. I'm not sure what's going on, but so we'll have to check that out later. But, uh, but we made it, and it's good to be here, good to, to share this time of worship with you. And I would like to uh, invite you at this time, as we enter our time of prayer, uh, to share your joys and concerns this week. Hey. Jim? I love joy. I love those little kids coming by and they're showing everything. I think it's so sweet what they dream they can dress up by. And that's, it just really a thrill. <laughs> they're Kim ones, you know, they came through. They came with trick or treating? Last night? Well, yeah, but then they were more of this player costumes. The costumes and stuff. I think in the old days, everybody said, oh, back then we didn't throw anything. Heck, we didn't have for Halloween. You'd go down there and be combined and known. And toilets turned over. Yeah. Yeah. Out the out and The time now is like an old man. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Well, I have a joy. Uh, we had a, a fundraising Halloween party last night to raise funds for renovating the mausoleum. And we, the time is had by some of the people here, too. And we had the person that came for the party specifically from the farthest away came from Nebraska. And the costume award went to a family of four adults that were dressed in a theme. All right, so what, what was the theme? Oh, their theme was witches and dead people. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. They were cute. <laughs> when the home team wins, you know. I was going to say, you ended on a winning note with your, your sons. Well, actually, we did not win. We got beat pretty bad. Oh, I did not. What was? Yeah, it was. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't really clear on that uh, on Facebook. But uh, what was neat was after the after the game, members of both teams and their coaches got in the middle of the field and prayed together. And uh, I think this one situation where people are objecting to people praying in public or or on school grounds or whatever is. Uh, anyway, I, there are opinions, but um, it's it's kind of caused this backlash where people are praying, and um, and I think that's a positive thing. Anytime people are praying, is a good thing. So uh, anytime, anywhere. I, I do want to mention we. I think we got, everybody here got decent rain, right? Finally on Thursday, Kim or Friday. Oh, it's on board. Yeah, but what did you get? Eighty. 80. Okay, that beats the heck out of zero. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully we'll get the rest of the weed up and stuff. That was a good thing. On the negative side and the downside, we probably need to remember the families of those 224 people that were killed in that plane crash in uh, Egypt. Kansas City one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's important. Sure. They only need one more game. It's been a long time. 1985, right? You were just a pop. Actually, I was in college at the time. <laughs> Any others? We had this other one. I'm not sure who I'm supposed to pray for in this one.
We have been praying for a, a long, steady, uh, beneficial rain, and we have received it, and we are grateful. Lord, too, we're, we're thankful for, um, for young people uh, praying on football fields and wherever else, I think, sparked by perhaps a movie and some other events going on, Lord, we, we just uh, acknowledge that you are worthy of our prayer. And so um, we pray that you would continue to pour out your spirit on your people, that you would raise them up in prayer and, uh, and praise, because you are certainly deserving of it. Lord, we thank you for uh, our community and the events that happen within our community that, that help to make life rich and valuable. And, and so we thank you, Lord, for the kids who came and, and displayed their costumes at the care home, uh, the fundraiser at the mausoleum, uh, or for the, re the renovation of the mausoleum, uh, and, and those things. We, we thank you for uh, a winning team the Royals, and, and, and these things just make life uh, special in, in various ways. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering this morning, for those who are not here with us uh, for various reasons. We ask, Lord, you prayer for, we, we pray for their travel, uh, for their situation wherever they're at, whether they're at home or in the hospital or whatever. We pray for Dan, who is suffering headaches, we ask, Lord, that you would help the doctors uh, find uh, the, the problem so they can begin to treat it appropriately. Father, too, we, we pray for all those uh, families and the nations uh, touched by this horrible plane crash. But, Lord, that's not just the only problem. We've had murders and children getting run over this week in Wichita and uh, this weekend in Wichita and uh, just all kinds of tragedies and troubles in our world. Jesus said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Lord, we thank you for that, and we acknowledge Jesus as the overcomer, our Lord and Savior. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare for the scripture reading, uh, Anna, would you and Joe take the offering in the central aisle? And Kim and Mark, could you do the outside? Thank you. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Hebrews. You will find it on page 223 of your New Testament. And this is in verses, verses 11 through 15, and I've gone through this, and I hope I don't uh, I do it justice, because it's, it's good that I make sure it reads properly. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of his, his creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been deified so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. Scripture this morning identifies Jesus as the high priest. 
His sacrifice, His broken body, and shed blood supersedes all systems of ritual sacrifice. That's really quite a bold statement when you think about it. Even many who call themselves Christians have denied this statement. Salvation through Jesus' blood is not the only way of salvation, they say. And they have no idea that they have disqualified themselves in so doing. I want to uh, kind of give some background to this text. The, uh, the scripture for today was uh, just four verses. But uh, I think to simplify and help us have a little bit of background, I want to start... I want to go back a couple of verses here. In fact, go back to the beginning of chapter 9 and just read those verses leading up to this because I think they will be helpful in moving forward with the rest of the message here this morning. Uh, it, it's basically uh, summarizing in a, in a real concise way uh, the Old Testament system and how that differs with the, with the coming of Christ and the, the ministry of Christ to us. Now the first covenant is in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 1. Now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. A tabernacle was set up. In its first room were a lampstand, were the lampstand and the table and the consecrated bread. And this was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place, which had the golden altar of incense and the gold cover. Ark of the Covenant, and this ark contained the gold jar of manna from the wilderness wanderings, Aaron's staff that had budded, uh, and then the stone tablets of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Above the ark were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the atonement cover, or the mercy seat. But we cannot discuss these things in detail now, the writer of Hebrews says. When everything had been arranged like this, the priests entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry. But only the high priest entered the inner room, and that only once a year, and never without blood with which, with which he offered for himself and for the sins of his people that, he, that had committed, uh, if, I'm sorry, for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. This is unintentional sin, okay, that that blood is offered. The Holy Spirit was showing by this that the way to the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still standing. This is an illustration for the present time indicating the, that the gifts and sacrifices being offered, offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. And there's our problem. This old system was not able to deal with the inside of the worshiper, only able to do with the external. They are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings, verse 10 says, external regulations applying until the time of the new order. And then the writer of Hebrews goes into our passage today. The problem is in verse 9. No other sacrificial system is all-encompassing or eternal as is the sacrifice of Christ. But the problem is that, that the old system did not deal with the internal conscience of the worshiper. And as we see in verses 11 and 12 here, Jesus didn't enter into the man-made most holy place of a tabernacle or temple as any other sacrifice might enter. Neither did he enter through the blood of animals. Jesus entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Now what does eternal mean? Except eternal. Everlasting. Many Christians today, however, not knowing these ritual sacrifices can easily come away from a discussion about sacri a sacrificial system, uh, wondering 
uh, that we don't live in a, a theocracy that uses a sacrificial system for dealing with sin and death. So what's the point of studying such things? Great question. However, in all actuality, we do live and, and believe in a sacrificial system. One that involves Christ Jesus as the sacrificial lamb. Therefore, studying the Old, Test Old Testament system can aid in depending, or deepening our understanding of the New Testament system. The Old Testament system, the Torah, the law, is complex. But please allow me to simplify what's going on here in these four verses as best I can. On Yom Kippur, that's the Day of Atonement, the blood was sprinkled to cleanse things used in worship from the effects of unintentional sin. In the red heifer sacrifice, the blood which was in the ash was reconstituted by water and was used to cleanse the people and their tents and furnishings if they happened to uh, come in contact with a dead body. Somebody died in a tent, that, had, that tent had to be uh, 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 consecrated, cleansed. Uh, from the effects of the power of death. And if you want to look that up on your own, that's Leviticus chapter 16. Uh, you can do some research on your own on that. Then verse 14, here in Hebrews 9, recognizes that the blood of Jesus' sacrifice includes the Yom Kippur and Red Heifer sacrifices, yet has accomplished for us something much more effective and longer lasting. The Jewish sacrificial rituals involving blood only produce physical uh, uh, ritual cleansing from sin and death. But the problem, again, in verse 9, doesn't deal with conscience. So the blood of Jesus cleanses not just the body, but our entire awareness of ourselves from dead works, so that we can worship and serve the living God. That's the purpose for this cleansing. So, verse 14, while a ritual cleansing could restore the status of the worshiping community, the cleansing offered to us in Christ can actually transform us from the inside out, both as individuals and as a community. The blood of bulls and goats and lambs could not atone for sin, but merely pointed us toward the one that would come in the end of the age, to put away sin by sacrificing himself. So in the fullness of time, God sent his son into the world to be born of a woman, and at the end of his life, he shed his precious, eternal blood once and for all. After that, there is no more sacrifice. The blood of the sacrificial animals in the Old Testament was corruptible and decayed, and was soon gone. But the blood shed on Calvary was imperishable blood. It is called incorruptible. As Peter said, the Apostle Peter said, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed, but with the precious blood of Christ. The blood of the Lord Jesus is sinless blood, and therefore incorruptible. For sin brings corruption and death. Where there is no sin, there is no corruption. And after Christ made atonement for our sins, he was raised from the tomb as the eternal high priest. He ascended into heaven to present the blood in the Holy of Holies where God himself dwells. And that blood is there today. A living blood pleading the case for those who put their faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord. That blood, pleading our case, or pleads our case and triumphs on our behalf. The blood has been shed. The incorruptible, eternal, divine, sinless, overcoming, precious blood. It was effective then and remains powerful today. And throughout all eternity, it will never never lose its power. I'm reminded from this passage 
of the song uh, written by Andre Crouch, uh, the great worship uh, song writer and performer uh, over the years, uh, just passed away not too long ago. The very first song he ever wrote was when he was 14 years old. And uh, I don't think I have a voice for it today, so I will read you the words. The blood that Jesus shed for me, way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Amen. If you would join me. In the great Thanksgiving, actually the invitation, Christ our Lord invites us to this table, all those who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, to seek and to live in peace with one another. Therefore let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, would you take a moment in silence for personal confession and repentance? Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. The Holy Spirit of God now rests on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. For these elements have been duly consecrated and have become for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
let me get on his way. And uh, all kidding aside, pray for good oil pressure. Yes. That, that's a feeling of dread, isn't it, when you see those little lights come on? Ah, especially the ones behind you that are going like this. <laughs> if you would all now please join me in our offering prayer. O oh Lord, you are the mighty one who commands the armies of heaven. Yet you know and care for the poor and the grieving. Your son Jesus wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We rejoice that you have destroyed the power of death forever in Christ's resurrection. Thank you for the new life and hope that you have so freely we dedicate our offerings for the work of this church. May you wipe away the tears from the eyes of all who mourn in our community. We pray in your holy name. Amen. If the ushers will come forward to receive the offering.